Yo, what's up, Pop? How are you all doing today? Uh, welcome to another fucking stream. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Mr. Botka, John Out9, Move AX, Thodin, Free Fu, I Good Duke. Uh, yes, it's it's me, Jesus. I don't have a beard though, so I'm sorry. That hair, thank you so much. F Mega uh, Danilu, who's next? Antonio, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we're doing what? We're doing what? We're doing some hacking. How about that? I bet you didn't expect hacking today. Give us the blessing. I bless you. Whatever. Not religious. I don't know how to bless people, but bless you if you sneezed. So, uh, yeah, so here's an idea. Today we're going to develop something cool, I think. I really want to try to develop something cool. Uh, essentially, um, uh, some people know. Uh, uh, no offense, but you look hilarious. I know that out nine. But yesterday, I actually looked like that and people started to donate more. So from now on, I'm going to actually look like that. So, yeah, if it gives me more money, so that means that's okay. I'm a clown on the internet after all, so it's totally fine. So, and uh, yeah, so essentially some of you probably already know that um, um, sometimes I have an interesting, uh, like a tick when I'm developing things, right? So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Essentially, uh, by the way, now if I'm, if I'm going to explain that, uh, you won't be able to un and see that at all. So uh, from time to time, uh, I'm going to type uh, like a really strange word, like void, 
and instantly remove it. Uh, I don't know why I do that. It's sort of like a tick that I developed um, some time ago, actually. Uh, I can, like, as far as I can remember myself, I've been doing that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so some people already noticed that in the chat. Some people already noticed that. Um, so I decided to develop a program that actually logs my keys, not really logs them, right, but um, looks for a specific sequence of, uh, of the keys, a specific sequence of them. Hello, apparently potatoes. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, and uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, look specifically... Uh, finally legal, goddammit. Finally legal. Thank you, thank you so much for 18 months of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic legal... What the fuck am I saying? Uh, to our epic uh, key logger club. So, yeah. Uh, so, what, what are we gonna do today? What are we gonna do today? Um, yeah, so it, this subscription was so, uh, so epic that I completely forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, so essentially that's what we're going to try to develop today. I'm going to try to develop like a simple application that looks for a uh, combination of keys, right? The specific combination of keys and um, just, um, you know, if, when a void happens, like when void happens, it would uh, do some sort of event, right? It will do some sort of event. Uh, maybe send like a REST API query to um, some sort of like a web server that manage the, manages the um, uh, the overlay on the OBS. Maybe we're going to collect the statistics of voids. Um, you know, we're going to see in, on which days of the week I type the most amount of voids. Maybe we can build a correlation to like a language, right? So maybe in a, in a particular language, I do more voids uh, than usual. Um, so that's going to be the idea, essentially. Does it sound interesting? Does it sound interesting? Uh, hopefully it does sound interesting. So let's actually try to do something like that. Uh, let's try to do something like that. Um, that's sort of a... Uh, that's some sort of a therapy to get rid of the habit. Not really. Um, if I wanted to have some sort of a therapy to get rid of the habit, I would probably hook it up to some sort of like a you know, electroshocker of some sort, so, um, but I'm not gonna do that. So it's more of a like a fun meme that I wanted to do. It's a good way to leak some passwords on the stream live, but I mean, if I'm gonna actually log things, but I do not plan to log anything, right? So, uh, yeah, so I, what I'm gonna do essentially, I'm gonna just look for a specific combination of keys, right? So, what's up, Lomakoto, by the way, welcome to the stream, how are you doing? What's up, what's up, what's up? All right, so let's continue. Let's continue. Mm, 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 mm. Just be careful when debugging. Yeah, I'm being careful usually. Why do we have a small PP repo? <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Sometimes I have like a really strange repos and small PP and it has, I th yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think I was trying to come up with the smallest compilable C program. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, yeah, that was fun. I remember that. That was kind of fun. Uh, so, uh, now, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So, I think... Uh, so there's a lot of ways to actually log the keys in Linux, right? You can try to do that on the on the level of the input device. You can try to do that uh, on the level of X11. I think the easiest one for us right now is going to be on the level of X11, right? Because I'm not going to run this program while not running X11, right? So because I'm going to run this program while I'm streaming, uh, right? And I cannot stream without X11 because OBS cannot work without X11, right? It cannot work without that. Hello, Mil uh, Mildar. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Uh, so, and you know what? Um, you know, there is another program that uh, does something similar uh, to what I'm trying to do. This program is called Screen Key, right? So, it's called Screen Key. Uh, it's a Python script. 
is this how it's called? I don't quite remember. I think it's something like... Um, yeah, I think it is Yeah, screencast tool to display. It's written in Python though, but it works with Xlib. It does work with Xlib. Um, okay, it moved to GitLab, so we'll have to look at the GitLab uh, situation. What's up, Hamiko Peter? Welcome to the stream. And... Uh, uh, two, 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 two. Uh, yeah, so what I was planning to do, maybe, to look into the source code of that thing uh, and just see how it, uh, you know, captures the keys and do something similar, right? So uh, before we go into that, um, I need to create a, a repo where we're going to keep all of that. <clears throat> how should we call the repo? Oh, goddammit, Mr. Botka is not subscribed, so it cannot display so in cool mode, which is kind of sad, which is kind of sad. Thank you, Redman uh, Darin. Uh, thank you. Thank you for 20 bits. Really appreciate that. Uh, so does anybody have any ideas on how to call uh, the project that we're about to develop? Just call it what? Oh, that's a good idea. I don't, I don't know why it didn't come to my head. Uh, Majul, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, four so months cool. of... Uh, Zero one subscription, thank you, thank you, thank you. And why is the music so loud? I can't quite understand. Can you give Botka a subscriber forever? Actually, I think I remembered which thing he's not a bot. Yes, you just answered your own question. So <laughs> thank you for asking a question and instantly answering it. I really appreciate that. I really like when people do that. What language do you speak? Uh, I speak English, I suppose. What language is? Oh, I speak English and Russian. Um, so, uh, let's call it void of, uh, literally, so it's going to be void of. I wonder if I already have uh, uh, something called void of, because I'm not quite sure. Uh, no, I don't have anything called void, void of. So, let's continue. Um, so, I'm going to actually use C this time. I'm going to use C. Um... Uh, and the way we're going to develop all of that, so the core, um, uh, at the core uh, of this entire program, there will be a simple, like a very simple function, right? So um, let's call it is void. It, it will return actually boolean is void. So is void, and it's going to actually accept the character, I think. Uh, an anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to Mr. Botka. Thank you so much, an anonymous user. I really, uh, really appreciate that. And Mr. Botka, welcome to our epic hooker club. No, god damn it, hacker. Okay, so I was trying to apply the the Kuder and Kumer meme uh, to word hacker, and apparently that didn't really work well. I didn't realize that. Okay, so let's let's never do that. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Um, all right. So, um, and uh, we're gonna do the following thing. I think I'm gonna have like a static, um, static const uh, const char void, right? And it's gonna just store a single thing void here. Um, God damn it! We need to keep track of some sort of like a state, right? We need to keep track of some sort of state, like what we are currently on. All right, so and we can keep track like here. So this is going to be some sort of a cursor uh, that points at the current character, right? It points at the current character uh, and we're going to pass it by a pointer because we're going to modify it, right? essentially. So, and uh, here it is. Uh, how are you supposed to use that? Uh, you basically get characters, right? Uh, I'm not sure if uh, C has this function. I know in Curses uh, already has, um, has functions, has uh, this similar function. Um, but it uh, doesn't matter. So we're gonna accept the keys in some sort of like infinite loop, right? So imagine that this is the event loop. Right, this is an event loop. And we're also gonna maintain the cursor. Uh, we're also gonna maintain, no, this is not a pointer. It's gonna be just a regular cursor. It's, uh, it doesn't matter what it is because it's a pseudocode anyway. Hello, Zen12, welcome, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. So, and now, uh, essentially what I do is void uh, cursor 
uh, x and if it is void void uh, so you you can do something do something right so and that's how it is gonna work so essentially the state of this state machine is uh, located inside of the cursor and every time it receives the character so it updates the state and returns you whether uh, you know vo the void has happened so and how we're we gonna implement this entire thing well um, so we're gonna first check if uh, void cursor equal to X and in that case in that case we increment the cursor right we increment the cursor uh, like this and if uh, void f cursor equals zero, that means we reached the end of the word, uh, we'll have to reset the cursor to zero and return true. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll have to return false, right? And here, otherwise, we'll have to return false. And I think we can essentially squash this entire logic by removing else branches like so uh, removing else, else branches you see and here is the entire state machine does it make sense uh does it make sense hopefully it does make sense so um yeah we'll see how it works mm. Coding loop here isn't the same as doing plus plus. Yes, it does. Uh, if the first branch fails, ah, yeah, that's true. That that actually means that I need to do something like this: cursor uh, equals zero. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, right. Mm -hmm. So and uh, yeah, and uh, simply we need to actually hook this uh, algorithm up into um into some sort of the library like x11 library that uh, constantly receive the keys and stuff like that uh and we're gonna be gucci i think we're gonna be gucci so uh let me let me see let me see mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so where it is where it is so i'm gonna actually clone screen key and try to understand how exactly they're doing that uh, I already looked a little bit into how all of that is implemented there. Uh, so, and uh, I think I'm gonna go into third party. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. So now, uh, Third party. Keep in mind, by the way, that screen key is written in Python. So if you're really afraid of Python, if you have a Pythonophobia, I would really recommend you to close the stream and back away from the computer like very, very slowly. But if you're totally okay with Python, so that means you, you can keep watching. You can keep watching. So here's an ex executable. And uh, so what essentially we're doing here, uh, I suppose we're starting the, oh shit. Okay, so we're parsing command line arguments here. This is understandable. Uh, and uh, so yeah, here's a screen key application. Uh, xlib.py, yeah, I think I remember that. Oh, wow, beautiful hair. Thank you, neutral second. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just me being uh, like having a uh, middle age crisis. Don't worry about it. Mm, did you revert lighting from yesterday? No, I think I fixed my camera. There's something wrong with my camera. So, uh, and I, I guess I fixed it, I, I don't know. Mm. So, oh yeah, this is something that I noticed when I was looking through this code. Uh, did you guys know, like, there is like super easy FFI in Python? Uh, in the form of the, uh, in the form of this module. It's, it's actually very interesting, L let me show you. So it's going to be Python, and uh, you basically import from C types, uh, import everything, and C DLL, and you can just load up the DLL. I didn't know that it's so easy in Python. I thought you will have to write like a C code to make it possible. So you see, it actually creates a module. You can do something like X11, and you can take a look inside of this thing, 
and it's an instance of that thing and you can look into some methods uh, but unfortunately like dear is not gonna give you the list of the methods you have to know their names for example x open display right but uh, it does exist and it's actual function pointer it's it's fucking amazing isn't it uh, well I mean I'm not actively working on the uh, in Python but also sorry so uh, that's why I didn't know that. Oh, it's it's actually dict. Okay, let's let's take a look at it. So maybe I, I don't know for sure. Oh, okay. But it only contains like X open. Does it contain like does it lazily load them? Does it lazily load them? I think I think it does. Um, all right. So let me let me see. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. uh so what they're doing here they're just preparing some types some classes and some methods all right so this is basically like a wrapper around that dll right it's just a simple wrapper around that dll and that's pretty much it so the actual code the actual code that does something useful is probably located in a different place so screen key we need to find the place where they use x open display right so unfortunately i cannot easily search so i'll have to do something like grab rn yet again because my emacs is really really broken excuse me mm, just a second god damn it i have a real like case of ocd I'm back. The metal is back. All right. So, someone get this man a comfy chair. <sighs> Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. So, uh, what I wanted to do here is I want to search for X open display. Let's actually search for that. So, where do we use that shit? We use it here. So, this is input. Li okay, there we go. So we have input listener, uh, and it just opens the display, control display, uh, control connection, then X synchronize. I don't really know what is X synchronize. Uh, replay DPY, screen key. So then we create a custom, uh, so then X connection number, create replay window. Ah, oh, it's probably, yeah, it's, it probably also does some stuff for displaying these things as well i see uh-huh record enable so this is the thing uh maybe this is what we have to start working with because I, it does a lot of things uh but maybe we have to look into the control connection so it also close okay so this is that record context x record free context then the close display so it feels like it opens several connections but what is the uh, record uh, context uh -huh. mm. x record x record create context so it looks like very complicated why would you need this kind of functions this is kind of strange what is x record uh, function or something um record extension library uh, record extension. Mm. So let's let's read about it. The purpose of the extension is to support the recording and reporting of all core X protocol and arbitrary X extension protocol. Uh, it feels like, yeah, X11 docs finally exactly. Get fucking damn it! Isn't he just recording video of the screen? No, it's a. Oh, maybe. Okay, so maybe that's what it is. But we don't. We definitely don't need that. We need like a very simple thing. We just need to input the keyboard. So dev ranges. Uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, hello, Jen Uh Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, 
Okay, so let's actually start with uh, creating like a simple boilerplate that uh, connects to X11 and stuff like that. Have you done Advent of Code? Yes, I've done Advent of Code on two previous streams. Uh, you can check out uh, our VODs. So, but there was actually inter interleaving, you know, the uh, actual, you know, stuff in Advent of Code. So, um, not the actual stuff, but the, the stuff that, that I usually do. All right. The stuff that I usually do. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to remove that. So, this is the main function. To be fair, like, this is the whole, like, logic of the application. And this is, like, probably less than 1%. The, everything else is going to be interfacing with something that can consume this logic. It's just so, so fucking depressing, to be fair. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, let me see. Um, let me close this one. And... Uh, also, maybe go to project Zosin. Project Zosin uh, void. <clears throat> so package config, package config, <clears throat> C flags X11. So is it called X11 or is it called Xlib? I don't quite remember. So let's actually do list. Uh, maybe list all. Yeah, maybe list all. Grab X11. It's just called X11, so that means it doesn't have any C flags. That's probably what it is. Uh, it does have libs. Okay, so apparently you just need to link it like that. Um, hello, Luke Gorilla. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, so the executable is going to be void, and this is going to be the dependency. So we're going to do it like that. So then C flags. So void main dot C. Mm. Libs. C flags, W all. We're not going to do the W error. Uh, we're going to do std C11. So we're going to try to be modern, like a little bit modern. Okay. And uh, we're also going to try to be pedantic, right? We're going to also try to be pedantic. So, and then we're going to have libs. Oh, on top of that, I can just do package config. Even though package config C flags uh, does not return. Um, uh, does not return any flags, it may on a different platform, right? So because uh, package config like is designed to be like platform independent or something. W extra, W extra could be annoying sometime, but uh, let's add extra as well, why not? I don't mind that, I don't mind that. Leaves X11, okay. So uh, let's see if this entire thing is gonna compile. All right, it does compile, so we haven't used variables and you see what I'm talking about. Um, but that's okay, right? That's totally okay. What does pedantic mean? That means it will complain if you try to use something on standard, because usually C and C++ compilers uh, different from different vendors implement uh, like a vendor-specific uh, extensions, vendor-specific extensions. And uh, if you use them, your code becomes uh, completely non-portable. So uh, basically to avoid that, uh, some compilers include special flag that helps you to avoid vendor specific extensions. So you can create a, a, a code that is, um, you know, compatible across different compilers. Yeah, you're welcome, sure, sure. Cheers, by the way. Mm. All right, <clears throat> so uh, let's open the display, All right? So first thing we have to do, we have to open the display. And I don't remember how to use this function, X open display. Uh, so let's just read about that. So essentially you have to use display name and I suppose uh, I can do like a null. Like I programmed using xlib quite often, but every time I need to use it again, I forget how to use it. Right. Uh, so uh, if display turn out to be null, we'll probably have to throw an error. Error. I oh, will also have to do something like std error. Uh, could not connect uh, to the x11 uh, display. Something like that. And we're gonna like, return one. Uh, so after that, I'm gonna close the display. 
Right, and let's try to compile that and see if it works. It doesn't work because I also need to import something related to X11, uh, some things. So it has to be something like um, X11 and in in there, uh, we probably have things like xsleep. Okay, so let's just try to import xsleep and see how it's gonna go. Alright, it seems to be compiling, but it doesn't link properly because I did a fucky wacky with libs. Um, yeah, I think it has something to do... Yeah, 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 so you're not supposed to call things like that. You're supposed to use backticks or shell. It's one of those things you're supposed to either use like shell package config Right, or in the backticks, but uh, backticks, as far as I know, is more pre preferable because it works on FreeBSD as well, right? So, yeah, there we go. So it seems to be working. And if I try to run it, it doesn't crash, uh, right? It doesn't crash at all. And we can try to make it crash by providing some sort of like a uh, complete bullshit display just to see if the error reporting works correctly, right? So an error reporting uh, reporting uh, works absolutely correctly. Okay, so that means we can easily connect to null. So we successfully connect to the display. Mm. All right. So what's going to be the next part? Uh, so in the screen. Uh, hello, Cozy White Bear. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, Zozin. Uh, it's not Zozin, it's uh, actually a third party screen key. Uh, let's try to just see what we can use here. I, I feel like that's the thing we need here. Like the input listener. The actual input listener. But I'm not sure if it exactly that. So it's a keyboard callback. Uh, when do they call a keyboard callback? Okay, so they have kbd event callback, event processed. Okay, and then kbd process. Why are there so many layers of indirection just to do such a simple thing? Okay, and here is the loop. Okay, so in the loop, they, yeah, they uh, they capture the keyboard event and then they process that keyboard event and also like button processes okay so this is the event loop that we'll have to organize uh and we can also organize it in our code as well uh already so but we're gonna have like a special thing that indicates that we're the time has come to quit while not quit uh we're not gonna quit but the question is how can we hook up to just listening to all of the keys that's a good question um Mm, expanding record. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So what does X synchronize? Let's actually see. Uh, I'm not really sure what it does. Listening to all the keys is illegal. I mean, if I can do that, uh, it should be legal. Uh, enable disable synchronization. The X synchronize function returns the previous uh, the previous after function. Excuse me. Uh, what does it mean? Does anybody understand what they're trying to tell us? The X synchronize function returns the previous after function. If on off is true, X synchronize turns on synchronous behavior. If on off, oh, okay. A specified procedure is called with only display pointer X. Oh my god. It means fuck you, impedent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's a thing called after function. Uh, so we just don't know what is the after function. Um, Alright. Maybe I should actually stop and just Google X11 uh, capture all keys and just follow that. Uh, show keys pressed in Linux. Okay. Uh, this is not what I want. I, I want to do that with X11. It's opposite of before function. If test, no, this is not if test. All right. <clears throat> so we also create a custom atom. X connection number. Um, Input keyboard. 
So I think maybe some sort of a setup happens in record context, uh, but it doesn't look like it. Wait a second, can we just start receiving events though? Is that a thing we can do? Uh, is that, like, what if we try to just do something like while true, right? And just start receiving stuff. Um, expanding. X wire to X wire. But why don't they, okay. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're going to take a look at that as well. Uh, expanding. Function returns the number of events that has been received from the X server but have not uh, been removed from the event queue. Is identical to uh, X event queued. Okay, so, um, so then we can use X next event. Uh-huh. All right, let's actually try to use that. Let's actually try to use that. Um, so we're going to have something like X event, right? So it's going to be X event. Uh, and while expanding, uh, while expanding, so we provide the display, uh, our display. We're expanding, so uh, if it's zero, that means we already processed everything. We'll have to do x next event. Um, so that, does it return anything? I don't think it returns anything. It's going to be x next event. Display and a pointer to the event. Right. Uh, and a pointer to the event. And uh, then we can try to say something like uh, we received event, right? Info received received event there we go uh and also we'll should print like this thing here um yep so let's give it a try uh we're gonna recompile that and uh, it's gonna be void of and it doesn't receive any events okay so that's that's cool uh but at least it listen to listens to something uh X11 has the superior anti keylogger defender their documentation exactly. <laughs> that just makes it difficult to even uh, develop keyloggers. So, so yeah. Uh, to, to, to. So X wire to event or something, right? So as you guys mentioned, X wire to event. Uh, let's try to see what it's all about. And there's literally no documentation for this shit. Cool. Is that there? Think. Uh, X, Y, to event. Okay, what's that? Is, is there like X, Y, to event there? Does it actually solve any of my problems? Does it actually solve any of them? So X, Y, to event. Is it where, it's there? Is it there? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It's too much code, by the way, for me to comprehend. I didn't think it has to be that complicated. Uh, I didn't think it has to be that complicated. Uh, so, by the way, uh, we have their thing here. X, Y, to event. Oh, okay, so it's... God damn it, it's not even... It's not even X11 shit. That's actually, that's actually very interesting. It's not, not even X11 shit. Uh, so we can take a look at, at K, KBD wire to event. I literally got debated yet again. Uh, all right, so wire to event. Okay, so GPY. Okay, cool, it creates uh, the event and returns the new event. Okay, that makes sense. And okay, so then uh, we do the callback. It no, it's it's very not what I. It's so complicated. The architecture, like, why do they have this like spaghetti of callbacks and shit? Like, why why do you complicate all of that? Um, God damn it. Python. 
Yeah. X record replies. Maybe it has something to do with X record. Uh, X record process. By the way, what is the X flash? Um, this is X flash. Let's take a look at that. Uh, uh huh. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at the documentation. Uh, function flashes output. Uh, all right, all right. Um, flashes the output buffer. Most client application need to use this function because the output buffer is automatically flashed as needed by the calls expanding. Uh, need not use this to okay so that makes sense they need not use that shit. okay that's cool um x window event i have an interesting idea okay so i remember that x11 xlib had the notion of a default window so the root window uh x uh lib default window like a root or something something does anybody remember how was it called default root window yeah, yeah default root window how can you get it so this is what it is why do people put so much shit into a single man page what the hell is wrong uh root window and okay returns the root window for the default screen okay so maybe uh we can use that and then use a, like next window event right next window event or something like this so uh that would be that would be cool i think so default window we're gonna put a display there and um i don't really know what this thing returns to be fair uh, and how are you supposed to use it? I would like to see some examples of this. Okay, it returns a window, uh, something that is called window. So let's call it root, right? So we do have root. Uh, does it compile? It does in fact compile. So, and uh, we have to have things like uh, X window event, right? Uh, function searches the event queue for in both specified window and mat mask then it finds a match uh, removes the event from the queue okay so uh I'll copy this into the specified structure the other events stored in the queue are discarded um don't you read key events in boomer yes i do but i also create a window but in this particular case i just don't have a window that's the problem here um okay um that's the problem so uh now what i want to do um mm -hmm. what i want to do um so this this is going to be the display and it also accepts the window yeah, yeah so we can do display root event mask i'm not sure how can you compose uh, an event mask um X11 or uh, maybe X sleep event mask. Mm -hmm. Event mask. Key press mask. Okay. So maybe I can just maybe I can just put something like this here, like key press mask. Uh yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about but i think i'm gonna like leave with maybe key release mask yeah key release mask uh x window event and i'm not really sure if expanding is gonna work in our particular case is there like expanding for a specific window uh i wonder right so X event, X flashes, X. Oh my god, this is so horrible, by the way. Um, all right. So, by the way, is it even blocking? Is it even blocking? X event window searches for the event. Uh, the others uh, blocks until one is received. I, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. So, uh, we're going to look for a release mask. All right. And then we're going to give a pointer to the event. And then we're going to do print F. 
and uh, the received event right just to see if we are we are actually receiving anything so uh, void no it doesn't receive anything unfortunately um, that's really strange so mm, so there's also like a gr thing called grab or whatever um, Mm -hmm. X window event uh, root. This is not English for sure. Uh, how can you listen to the root events? That's a good question. That's exactly what I'm trying. Not X11, by the way. Look at that. Not X11. Uh, the code you posted does. Uh, all right. Create client. Wait a second. What what the hell was that? Um, yeah, I think maybe the time has come to take a look at XF, right? So maybe that's exactly what we need to do, right? Um, um, I think I'm wasting time uh, by looking at. Uh, by looking at screen key because it doesn't really give us much uh, that much so xf actually listens listens it also creates a window nah that's the problem it creates a window that's a huge problem no 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 um yeah x11 listen to all root window events there we go Oh yeah, you also have to not consume them. This is actually pretty important. Uh, okay, so they're using this thing, the current focus. Get input focus. Oh shit, this is complicated. Uh, this is actually super complicated. Mm. X select input. I don't know, because I don't know how to program in X11. So X, X select input. So what does it do? Mm, select input events and before accidentally consume all events and renders compute unusable uh, I use that it works okay so uh, function re requests that the X report the events associated with the specified event mask okay so uh, that's actually cool Let's give it a try. Um, so maybe also in that case, uh, we'll have to do the following thing. X select input, uh, display, uh, root, and uh, event mask is, mask is gonna be key release mask. There we go. Uh, so do I use it correctly? I think I'm using it correctly. So I suppose if I'm do, gonna do it like that, I don't really need X window event. I can just do X next event, right? So, and I just can wait for these events. And then while X pending uh, display, I can just do these kind of things, don't I? I think I, think I should be able to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is it dangerous, by the way? Do we have any uh, professional X11 developers? Is it dangerous to do something like that? Will the rest of the applications receive the events? Because Supercuber is definitely trying to debate me into something. And I'm not sure if, I, <laughs> if I'm mentally ready to do all of that. So, Hamikovi, do you know? Is, is this code safe? Is it not going to kill my entire stream? Um... Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Let's give it a try, I suppose. What's the worst can happen? Uh, sure. Um, void. It doesn't receive anything. It doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything at all. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe I just need to do it like that because the next event also just. Yeah. Mm. You know. It would be just easier to like directly listen to a uh, deaf input uh, device here somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? Just just listen directly to that rather than working with X11 because this is horrible. <laughs> God fucking damn it. I don't like X11 at all. Like I think it's a horrible thing to work with. I mean, uh, working with these devices, uh, like uh, what is it called? Event? Input? I, I don't remember. I think it's something like event. Uh, right, working with them requires root, but I can't just give root because I'm running it on my machine. Uh, I thought you learned your lesson of... I, I don't know, I thought like this doesn't require any spe spe uh, specific permissions, right? So, but with, uh, with this approach, I'll have to give it root or at least sticky bit or something. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, all right, so let's actually try a different approach then. Um, uh, so there was like X input. Does anybody remember like there was um, keyboard Linux, Linux, keyboard, uh, uh, keyboard, device device file uh, keyboard device in um, in Linux okay so it's chart to why um, I remember there was like utility that would help you to actually find out uh, device file for keyboard does anybody remember how to how to find that mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember there was utility for that. I forgot the name of it. Forgot the name of it. Does anybody remember? Chat, help. Uh, Linux keyboard device. Uh, hello, Jappy Jappy. I don't remember. God damn it. It kills me. It fucking kills me. F, F test. Is it F? No, it's not F test. Is it F test? I don't remember. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It's ever, ever test. There we go. That's what they're fucking talking about. Yes. And uh, yeah, I have a, a HHKB and that means I need 14. And there you go. And I think it's going to work regardless of me being on. Yes, that's exactly what I want. Right. That's exactly what I want. Nothing, nothing special. And you know what? I'm gonna actually go ahead and uh, look at the source code of this F, F test, and I don't have to work with that shady fucking library. My God, I just cannot stand it. F test source code. Uh, let's take a look at the source code. Uh, so free desktop. Mm. So is that what it is? Is that the source code of this thing? Hopefully, hopefully it is. That's a lot of shit, my god. Um, so main. All right, so what do we do here? Uh, we have device name, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh, cool. Mm -hmm. So let me actually download this entire thing and I wonder if it builds. So this is the whole F test utility. It's a single C file. Oh shit, it is actually. Would you look at that? It's literally a single C file. I wonder if we can build we can build it uh, so I'm gonna take the raw thing of this I'm gonna take the raw thing of this thing and I'm gonna just literally W get that shit um, Cyclus is it Cyclus I don't see it being Cyclus oh you mean the, the fact that it's a single file that that makes it Cyclus I see cool so is it buildable you can just build it with just GCC apparently like it's it just builds and then uh, it works exactly as you would expect it okay that's cool so <laughs> I'm actually super happy that it's as, as simple as that um, okay so um, yeah this is this shit um, so I want to try to receive the list of the uh, of the devices uh, that's what I want to try to do so we uh, parse the command line arguments uh-huh 
if mod mod capture do capture uh, and then do query all right so what is do capture in the capture mode they request event device will be monitored and any um do query there is another mode which is do query remember the, the requested event device will be queried for the state of a particular um so i wanna find the so i suppose the usual thing here is that query device okay so but they have like list of all devices i want to try to do something similar i want to try to get that a list of all devices how can i do that so mod query mod version do capture maybe no device specify and trying to scan okay no device specify trying to scan this is where it's going to try to scan them but where does it start scanning them uh -huh. does it have anything related to scan scan devices okay scan all devices okay this is what i wanted okay uh that's cool um that is cool uh how do we do that we have a scan directory so scan dir is uh is some sort of a other function that we have okay scan dir uh scan dir i never heard about this function before that's really strange function scans the directory dir p calling filter on each directory entry uh, okay, so it basically recursively traverses this entire thing, right? So that's what it does. Um, okay, cool. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I assume all thrash metal jokes have been made already. Yes, uh, exactly. You're really, really late for that party. But you're welcome anyway. You're welcome to this party. Um so yeah uh, i want to make a cup of tea by the way i think i think i want to make a cup of tea <laughs> just a second by the way just want to make a cup of tea So yeah, uh, I, I, I suppose we're gonna like have a very similar application that just scans for the inputs and also asks the user what what um, what device we want to monitor, um, and then we're gonna wait for uh, specific keys, hopefully. Um, so that should be cool. If today is the start of the sodism actually becoming a thing, I'm in. Make me see. Oh, it's a okay. It's another long hair joke. I see. So sometimes, like, I just got used to them that I sometimes don't recognize them. C three three zero one. Thank you so much for gifting five tier one subs to the Zuzin community and uh, Stroth J um, uh, P U I uh, Go Go T. A new man, lumber chop man, uh, welcome to our epic, uh, you know, key logging club. That's right, we're a key logging today. How about that? The hair, exactly, I'm telling you, the hair works, right? The hair works. That's absolutely beautiful. So, I'm gonna stream like that from now on all the time. So, since it's, it's working. Has he lost his mind? Can he see or what? Why, what, what are you talking about? Is he searching for sugar for his you know, uh I don't understand what you're talking about, I'm sorry. All right, uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to actually turn on my kettle. Uh, I think it's Lyric. Ah, I'm sorry. I am blind then. I am blind. 
I'm back. Yes, I left because of Cachet. I was actually crying in the kitchen because he called me uh, no fun. Uh, but yeah, um, so let's continue. Scandir. Uh, Scandir looks actually kind of scary, not gonna lie. Um, Scandir looks kind of scary. So it accepts the directory. Uh, Oh boy, oh boy, so uh, is event device, uh, is event device, yeah, it basically checks event device name, All right, so, uh-huh, so we take a dear name, oh shit, okay, uh, version sort, and don't even know what is a version sort. It is not available here. That means version sort. Alpha sort, uh, the function can be used as the... Oh, it's a comparison function in which... Okay, this is really complicated shit. Not gonna lie. Uh, scan devices. So is event device and so on and so forth. <laughs> so it accepts like a higher order function. Um, a higher order function. And it returns you a bunch of these things. And what is the next thing we do? So we also have a name list. What is a name list? How do you even defi uh, define a name list? Oh, okay. So it will return you. Okay. So it will return you a pointer to that list. And then you can iterate through that shit uh, and actually do something about that. Okay. Okay, that makes sense dev input event so if i take a look at the uh so this thing okay so that makes sense all right let's try to port that to void right let's try to port that to void this is going to be main.c and let's fucking purge this x11 bullshit please can we fucking purge that i absolutely hate it um i don't want to work with x11 ever again uh, to be fair i'm telling you that as a linux user like as an active linux user that haven't used windows for quite some time win32 api is more pleasant to work with than x leap jesus fucking christ this is such a fucking cancer. My god. Uh, I'm telling you as an active Linux user, this shit is cancer. Um, all right. So, scan deer. Uh, scan deer. I think we're going to have like a very similar thing. Um, so, this is dev input device, and I'm going to put it just here. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I need to uh, put a readme here. Uh, and um, I'm gonna just put void here and we're gonna have references, right? So in one of the references that we have here uh, is gonna be that one. Uh, okay. It's gonna be that one. All right. So this is the reference we're working with. This is the reference we're working with and uh, if test. Mm, scan devices scan devices scan devices divide input event uh, and uh, then we have a name list All right this is where we're gonna have durant entries that we want to work with by the way name list is a pointer to pointer and we take a pointer to that thing which effectively makes us uh these three three star developers yet again so i became a three star developer the second time in my life yeah triple star developer yeah i'm sorry i'm a triple star i said three not three i said three stop making fun of my accent please or i'll stop making fun of yours because i heard yours <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just joking anyway so um okay is event device so um uh yep 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 oh that's actually pretty cool 
STR and CMP. So essentially, it uh, it basically cuts off. This is so smart. This is so smart because oh yeah, shit, I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, because the name of these things is, is gonna be event one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Like one, two, three, and essentially it just takes five. So it compares the name, it compares the prefix. So you can use strcmp to compare the prefixes. I think my cat was done, by the way. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> What's up, chat? How are you fucking doing? Uh, are you ready for an epic god triple star developer? Are you ready for a triple star development? Because I'm here to provide. Uh, finally, the hair is free. Th yes, it is in fact free. Um, bring it down. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna write like a uh, triple star function myself, but I'm using triple star functions like uh, scandir. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I actually wrote like a triple star function myself some time ago, so I think that does in fact count. Um, and all right, so here is the is event device, and then we have a version sort have a version sort and that should give us the uh, amount of devices right so here's the amount of devices we found uh, found D devices uh, uh, input devices let's actually call them input devices and um, I wonder if after all of that I have to deallocate something apparently not this is really straight oh yeah. would you look at that would you look at that? You have to iterate through all of these motherflippers and you have to free them yourself. So, um, scan deer shits all over the place and requires you as a user to clean up after it. How fucking rude. How fucking rude. Okay, I'm, I'm joking, of course. Like, I, I think I would implement it the similar way. <laughs> but essentially, what we'll have to do is do something like this. All right. Wouldn't happen in Rust, exactly. Borrow checker would have prevented that. How about that? Uh, name list is gonna be I, and then we're gonna do free. Bruh. And that's gonna be. To be fair, like, I mean, in a batch program, we don't really need to do this kind of shit, right? Because the operating system is gonna clean up everything afterwards. Uh, so, fuck that. Fuck that. So, bruh, bruh, bruh. Friends make garbage, good friends take it out. Yes. Uh, okay, so now uh, I'm gonna try to build my shite, build my shite, and it doesn't build because I don't have a DRAM. So let's include something's going on. I don't really know what exactly, but okay, good. okay. So Esther SMP. So I'll also probably have to include uh, string dot h. There we go. There. Please compile already. Version sort. Um, why version sort is not available? What do I need to include as well? But I included Durant. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, I don't even know. I don't know, man. What else do I need to include? Uh, implicit declaration of Scandir. Okay, so let's take a look at the if test and see what it includes there. So does it include Durant? Yes, it does. Maybe we need uni std, but why doesn't it say that in the documentation? If I go to scan deer, right? I go to the scan deer. Okay. Well, it says that maybe you also want a uh, fcntl. Uh, let's try to add fs fcntl and see if it's gonna help us to to do some other stuff. It's it's kind of bit bigger, and it doesn't fucking help. We don't have a version sort. We just don't have it, and documentation doesn't fucking help us. Thank you, documentation. Very cool. 
Okay, what about UniSTD? So maybe also we also need to add UniSTD. So maybe that's gonna help us. No, it's not. Okay, so Google version sort. Where can I find the ship? Uh, okay, so this is yet another man page. Uh, I don't, I don't even know. Um, it, it says include Durant. I included Durant. I still cannot find version sort. This is because I don't have it. Is that why? I mean, I'm using Debian Stale. Do you need GNU? Oh shit. Maybe I do. Oh shit. God fucking damn it. Mm, no joke, I like this hair and that's my uh, mind trying to run away from the co. <laughs> Sorry. So that's intentional, red people. That's intentional. The hair is supposed to mesmerize you and grab your attention. Um, so what's GNU source? I suppose it enables some GNU specific extensions. Yeah, yeah, so we, we explained that as, as simultaneously with Jim. Uh, okay, I suppose I'm gonna just define it, but can we get rid of that later? I, I would imagine that implementing something like version sort should be pretty straightforward, because what it does, it just comp Okay, it simply compares it. It simply compares it, like, we can implement that shit ourselves, like, come on, bruh. Um, so I can implement something like static int uh, lexico, like lexico, let's, let's do lex sort, like le lexicographical sort, right? So, and essentially it will accept these two pointers, right? It will accept these two pointers. And uh, this one is gonna be A, and this one is going to be B. I don't understand why it takes a pointer to pointer. Version sort pointer to pointer. Um, mm -hmm. Is it supposed to... Because I can modify it or something? Uh, so let's actually try to read about compare. Uh, okay. So sort it using QSort with the comparison function and collect it in array. Uh, okay. Name list. This is because I still don't understand why why is this a pointer to pointer? Because a pointer to pointer, I would understand that because it's an array of pointers to Durant entries. And then pointer to pointer to pointer is going to be a reference to the array of pointers of the entries. It's an array of Durant. Um, okay, so we have two arrays of Durant. The QSort will call you with Durant. Ah, let, let me take a look at QSort, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. All right, it gives you a pointer to the, and, and it's constant, it gives you a pointer. So in this case, they use first pointer as a reference to the pointer as an element. I think I understand that now. I think I understand that. Okay, so that means I'll have to use a very strange syntax uh, that looks like this. <laughs> so, and let's take a look at Durant entries. Um, uh, Durant, <laughs> open Durant. Uh, Durant. Uh, so where is this Durant structure? Durant struct. You lost me at pointer. Yeah, I know, because modern software developers are afraid of pointers. We want our safe languages, Rust and JavaScript. Please, no, no pointers. They're dangerous. They can corrupt our memory. Oh, no. Uh, all right. So, and what we're going to have here is, um, so, strcmp, right? strcmp. Uh, okay. And then we're gonna just return that. How about that? You see, I'm not afraid of pointers. I'm not afraid of pointers because I'm not a Zoomer JavaScript developer. I'm a Boomer C developer. How about that? Um, let's keep my recipes. Yes. All right, all right, all right. So I think this is not how it works. I think I should do something like this. So 
C. Where is my double dereference arrow? Why do I have only single dereference error, but not double dereference error, so I don't have to do that shit? Um, so <laughs> I, I guess the long hair makes all my jokes even funnier. I, I do realize that, so I think it was a good idea. All right, so um, anyway, my IQ is too low to check pointers for no. Uh, it's understandable. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh shit, that's a, such a cool idea. Yes. Oh my god. That would be so cool. But unfortunately, it looks like, you know, comparison period. <laughs> uh, because it's, it's literally... How a triple D reference would look like? Uh, no, no, this is not... Ah. Uh, like triple equals something. Yeah, that would be actually cool. No. <coughs> ah, Corona. Um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, I instantly lost my voice. <clears throat> How many hours do you say you code an average per day? That's a good question. Thank you for asking. The most important thing is not to die in the stream because dying in the stream is against us so that's kind of dangerous um, <clears throat> excuse me um i don't know what happened oh and by the way i finally have my tea so guys are you ready for a little bit of tea some more hmm? hmm? so yeah a little bit of a tea smr there we go there we go uh yep 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 Nice food, finally. TSMR. TSMR we deserve. That's what we deserve here. Okay, again. Now, <clears throat> now. Uh, so I wonder if it's gonna... Okay, so it does in fact work, but we have a lot of implicit declaration of Scandir. Uh, which is kind of strange. Is the whole thing even Scandir? Um... I'm not sure about that. Well, for some reason, like it still complains about like implicit declaration, which actually makes me a little bit worried. So let's actually try to do that a little bit uh, differently. Okay, this one is understandable. So this is going to be in depth. Okay, so, and also, let me try to get rid of that. All right. And if I remove that, it will complain about scan. Unfortunately, yes, yeah, scan deer is, uh, is a little bit of troublesome in this sense. Uh, so we'll have to do a GNU source. I'm really sorry, chat, but that's what we'll have to do anyway. Yes, that's what we'll have to do anyway. Uh, okay, okay. Actually, what if you compile with STD GNU 11? Uh, well, the thing is, the thing is, uh, Scandir, right, Scandir should be available POSIX C source. Um, do I need to include or BSD source or SVT source? Um, I don't know. Um, at some point, I think we should do something about portability. Um, to do get uh, rid of... Because I, right now I don't really know how to get rid of that and I don't really care that much. Oh, by the way, we can take a look at how it's done here. Uh, okay, so they... It, it's kind of funny how they say that they need that for S print F, but it's not really true. Um, okay, get rid of uh, for uh, more portable code for more portable code uh, for more portable code all right so and all of that compiles and if we try to run uh, is it uh, what's the executable the executable is void so if I try to run that thing it, it says found 18 input devices without root 
Look at that, it found them and it didn't even need a root. That's very strange. Uh, why EV test needs root though? Why does it need root? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Uh, so if I try to do EV to test, yeah, it says that it couldn't find anything. Okay, so the next thing we can try, uh, we can try to print them and see what they are. Uh, print F uh, S and it's going to be something like uh, name list I. Uh, this is the first pointer and the second pointer is going to be D name. This is not how I want to do that, D name. Uh, and then we're gonna free this entire thing. Okay, so if I try to do that, and here are all of the devices. Would you look at that? We found all of the devices. That's absolutely beautiful. But I think not everyone needs to be taken into account. So what do they do uh, next? What do they do inside of the devices? Um, all right. Mm -hmm. So they try to open the device. Uh, I see G name. Uh huh, uh huh. Uh huh, uh huh. Uh huh, uh huh. I don't really understand what exactly they're doing there. Okay, so here they are composing the file path, right? They're composing the file path, which is absolutely understandable. So we can uh, just take that. Uh, to our piece of code here as well. Tabs, by the way, imagine using tabs uh, in 2020. Okay, so we're gonna do it like that. Um, then, uh, S and printf, we're composing, uh, we're composing the file name, so we can also try to print that file name as well, because why not? Uh, so we have a new variable, but that's totally okay. Uh, void of name, and here are here they are. So these are actual uh, actual files. These are actual files, and um, po -po -po -po. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we're trying to open a file, and if we cannot open the file, oh shit! I see now. So probably we can see those files, but we can't open them. That's that's probably the case here. That's probably the case. That's why EV test, right, cannot find a single file. That explains it, right? It cannot find a single file. Right. So, and the next thing, I'm going to query replace it like that. So, I might as well actually. I don't really like this like a boomer way of defining variables at the beginning of the uh, of the scope. It's kind of meh. I don't really like that. Um, if it's less than that, uh, what we're gonna do here, uh, we're gonna just print something like could not open file as. God damn it, I just realized that it could void. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's gonna be f name, and uh, that's it. Uh, but otherwise, otherwise, we can just close it. Right, so we're essentially just scanning all of these files, right? So we're just scanning all of these files, we try to open them. And uh, after that, it should say that it cannot open none of them, right? That's why EV test couldn't do anything because it scanned through all of the files. It couldn't open none of them, so it just failed. Uh, all right. So this is the unused variable. This is the directive that expects version output may be truncated. Writing. Uh... Okay, that's actually pretty cool that it warns you about that. Look, look. It detected that you're writing to a fixed buffer, right? Um, it's actually very strange, like, huh? Yeah, D name is also fixed. So it warns you if the file path is too long, it can be truncated and your file path is not going to be correct. That's really cool. I wonder what exactly does that. Is that because of the extra stuff? Because I've never seen that warning before, even though I did something like that quite often. Uh, no, it still warns. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Huh. All right. So that's understandable. All right. Uh, so if I try to run this entire thing as a root, uh -huh. And it just found 18 devices, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably have to do something like um, opened S 
to the run it. And let's just try to recompile that. And if we run it with, uh, there we go. So we, it's actually pretty slow. Have you noticed how slow it is? Like opening and closing each of them. It's not just opening. That's really strange. It's probably because uh, maybe every time you open like an input device, it just does some initialization. But uh, why is it so slow? Why is it so slow? This is very interesting to think about that. Think about that. <clears throat> okay. So let's go back. Uh, so the next thing they do, once they open it, they use iOctal to uh, do some nasty shit with it. I don't know what exactly they're trying to do. Oh, they're trying to get... Oh my god. They're trying to get the name of the device. Uh, let's take a look at iOctal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what is this? Mm -hmm. Oh, it actually gets like a HID. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that's exactly what it does. It takes like the name and we can get the actual names of the devices. That's so fucking dope. Bruh. Bruh, 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 bruh. So after we open it, by the way, um, yeah, yeah, so we're not going to print opened. Uh, we're not going to print opened. We're going to just do this thing on the file descriptor, right? And name should contain the name, right? And we can print something like, um, let's put it like that. So it's going to be S, right? S, error, could not open the file then we're gonna have s and then we're gonna print the actual name you look like tom scott yes because i am <clears throat> i'm trying to actively hide the fact you see i grow hair grew hair so i don't look like a tom scott anymore i don't know what else should i do to not look like a tom scott um, uh, why this shit isn't compiled by no. Implicity declaration by Octal. I even changed my accent from British to Russian to sound more Russian. Zosin speak with British accent. I don't know how to speak with British accent. Um, my British accent is not that good. Sorry. Uh, so we have to do sys ioctal, I think. I think that's what we have to do. Could not open... Could not the open... <laughs> okay. Can your Vim uh, do that? Mm, 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 I don't think so. I don't fucking think so. Your Vim can do shit, bruh. Alright. So uh, we still have uh, undefined reference to, to this shit. Uh, where can I get it, though? I wish I wish I knew where I can get it. So maybe it's C types. Uh, you need the input. Do they have an oh Linux input? That's what really what you mean. Okay, thank you, Zhiyang. You probably already done something like that before, so you know better than me. Um, oh shit, that worked. Thank you, Zhiyang. I'm gonna give you VIP. So Zhiyang, there we go. Your VIP now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, uh, would you look at that? We have all of the fucking names. So I have uh, suppose, uh, suppose built-in keyboard, integrated camera. Uh, this is HHKB that I'm using right now. So optical mouse, the uh, the webcam, and here all of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> Anyways, so but I actually. Oh yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do, uh, to do here. I'm supposed to use F name. I'm supposed to use F name. Okay. So, and if I try to rerun it, yeah, it it tells me that this thing is that, this thing is that, and so on and so forth. Uh, so maybe since we're already using GNU, a GNU source, a GNU slash source, uh, or as I recently uh, started calling it, a GNU plus source. Um, we can simply replace this thing with a version sort, uh, version sort, right? Because that's what it enables us with. 
Uh, it's gonna be something like this. There we go. And uh, for fuck's sake, mate. Uh, okay, and there we go. So you see, it sorts them in, you know, in a version sort, which is a little bit more pleasant to look at. Uh, yes, you will. Mm, all your code base are belong to Richard Stallman. Yes. And as you can see, I'm starting to look like a Richard Stallman myself because of that. Mm. Uh. All right. Richard Stallman possessed me. Uh, now, what's going to be the next thing? Um, I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Uh, so once we scan all of them, right? So where do we call scan devices? So this is iOcto, we get the name, uh, device max device. So it also has a maximum device. It's kind of dumb, I don't think we need that. But yeah, okay. So do capture. We scan devices, right? We get the name. And the next thing, we open the device that we want uh, and we check is ATTY, right? Then we print device in four. Uh, and test grab. I think this is where we start doing all of that. I think this is where we start doing all of that. Okay, so we might as well. So what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, maybe I should accept all of the devices or something. Let me see. Uh, so um, uh, let's call it some, something like scan devices, right? It's also going to be like this. And uh, I'm going to just move this code here and I'm going to keep it. Uh, but the next thing I want to do, um, since I already know, right, what's the device. So the uh, top right keyboard is this one. So we're going to hard code it for now. Mm -hmm. const uh, hhkb so this is what we're gonna have here uh, what's up fedy 96 uh, yep all right so and in here we have to open this device as read only right eh, let's call it file name okay so and let me do it like this int fd Right, this is int fd, uh, and if fd less than zero, uh, that means something went wrong. Uh, we can even check uh, that we don't have enough permissions or something, but I don't want to do it right now. I don't want to really do that now. Uh, could not open file s, it's going to be file name. And then we're going to exit with one. Right. So let's actually keep the code base simple. And after that, of course, after you're done doing all that, you can close the file. Nothing special. Nothing special. So then is ATTY, is ATTY, test whether the file descriptor refers to a terminal. That's very really strange. Why do we do that? If it's not a terminal, we set buffer std out null. Um, oh, we check std out. All right, we disable the, the buffering for std out if it's not a TTY. Okay, so uh, let me double check what is a set buffer though. Set buff. Uh, buffering operation. Okay, so I'm gonna just delete that. I'm just gonna delete that. Uh -huh. All right, and they also print device in four. So I'm not really sure if I want to go into printing like the device in four or something. I don't think it matters that much. I think we need we need to jump right into test grub, right? So this is probably where we have like event loop. I should actually not. Maybe this is to dump to file to in real time. Maybe. Uh, okay. So then we have signal and then we have print events. Okay, that one is interesting. Print device events as they come in. All right. Yeah, yeah, I got it. That without buffering, I get it. I get it. All right. So yeah, we have input event. That's cool. All right, but I'm not quite sure. 
uh, why we need to test grab. This device is grabbed by another... Oh, okay, that's what we, why we need that. No events are available to have test while the <clears> other <throat> grab is active. In most cases, this is caused by X driver. That's actually very interesting. Do we really need to do that? Do we really need to do that? Maybe fuck it. So we also have interrupt handler and uh, do we really need it as well? Uh, then it has stop and where do we use stop? Okay, we use it in print time because... Aha. Uh -huh. That's very strange. Okay, well, let's actually assume that we don't need any of this shit. <clears throat> because I feel like we don't. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like we don't need... So this is like additional things that would be nice to have, right? But I don't think they're essential for the core of the application to work, right? Just test that you can grab it. Uh, and then print uh, like a nice message and stuff like that. I think we can add that a little bit uh, later after we uh, implemented what we wanted. So, okay, um, we're gonna uh, organize the event loop. Uh, maybe I'm gonna even do that without any of this stuff. So, uh, not quit. So, this is gonna be int quit uh, zero, int quit zero. And uh, what's going to be the next thing? What's going to be the next thing? Uh, so do we really need all of that? So our DFS, I don't even know what is our DFS. Um, select. If stop. This is really strange. Look at that. They check the stop condition here. They do select and they check it again. Just in case you got an interrupt while doing the select is that why that's very interesting hmm. Mm -mm -mm. all right so uh let's have these things here right, our dfs uh maybe i also want to yeah. Uh, if you get signaled during the select, it will return e interrupt. Oh, I see. So it will stop, and then, uh, every, like all the code below is going to be incorrect, right? So that's basically what's going to happen. I see. That makes sense. All right. So and also we need to, uh, we need to assign, we need to add that file descriptor. We need to add that file descriptor to our DFS. Wait a minute. This is needed if you have several file descriptors simultaneously. Don't you? Do you really need to, Do we really need to do that? I mean, isn't a read is gonna simply block? This looks like a such an overkill. Why do you use select for a single file descriptor? Maybe we shouldn't do that. I think it's such an overkill. Just do a read. What do you think, Jiang? I think it's kind of strange. I think it's it's really kind of strange. I think about it. Uh, okay, so let's actually try to do that without all of this. But it feels a bit. Yes, it does feel good. Uh, okay, so sure, that's even better, actually. So this one is going to be int, but we still need this event thingy. We still need it here, because we're going to read events into it. So it would make sense if we just had several of them, but the function accepts a single one. Okay, uh, so then... We take our D and divide it. Okay, so that enables us with iterating all of this stuff. Um, and to be fair, this is essentially gives us gives us the amount of events we've got, right? So uh, we can try to do something like this, right? Uh, re received uh, D events. It's going to be like this, right? Received D events. 
Uh, and let's try to build this entire thing. Um, so this one is unsigned. So that means I will have to do something like you, right? Oh my God. Uh, where's my compilation? Um, there we go. And directive maybe, okay. Uh, okay, okay. And it couldn't open that a specific file. Okay, that's understandable, that's understandable. So now if I do void and I do sudo, uh, it received three events. And what's cool is that uh, it works like this. So yeah, we're capable of actually capturing the events. Uh, isn't that a fucking epic? Uh, so, uh, we need to take a look at the event type, right? So, uh, this is event type and event code. And then we use code name. Um, yeah, let's, let's try to do a similar thing. Code name type and code. Uh, unsigned int. All right, so maybe I'm gonna do something like this, size tn, right? So th this is size tn, and I'm gonna put this thing here, and then we're gonna iterate all of that. It's gonna be size t, zero, n, plus plus i, and uh, it's gonna be event uh, i, so unsigned int uh, type, so we're, we're going to be looking for a very specific type, right? We're going to be looking for a very specific type. Um, scene. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is what I'm going to do here. Uh huh. I think I like it. I think I like it like that. Okay. So we're going to just print everything like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, type name. Why don't I have a type name? So probably type name. Oh, it's there. Okay, I see. And they even have a global events. Oh, shit. Uh, but maybe fuck it. How about that? Uh, what if we... So what is if e key? Uh-huh. So maybe I can just do the following thing. If type equal key um, printf got a key event. Right. And we can simplify it down to that. Um, it's actually quite surprising how much of the code from EV test you can simplify. Right. Uh, it's amazing. Um, all right, so it uh, did compile uh, between bytes into the, okay, whatever. sudo void, void. All right. It's kind of interesting. So I, I, I receive both a key key press and key release, which is kind of interesting, right? Both key press and key release. But I need to distinguish between them somehow, right? Uh, so is there something like press or maybe a release? I, I did a fucky wacky. Uh, release. Okay, there's a rel. It's, it's a relative. It's probably related to the to the mouse. Yeah, it's probably related to the mouse. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what was that? Type name. Uh-huh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so and let's take a look at the code, right? Do we have a code? Uh, I would assume that maybe code actually returns the, the key itself. Uh, but yeah, it has to be AVI uh, code. Right, and if I try to run it. What is 36? So um, I press the J, right? So I press J. Uh, and if I take a look at ASCII, 36. Uh, 
decimal is all right so this is a decimal and 36 and decimal is actually dollar so i'm not really sure what code means i'm really not sure what code means but we can try to uh see what it's all about you also have a value would you look at that uh you also have a value so okay code name let's take a look at the code name function uh what does it do uh max code max value names type okay there's names names uh global variable name uh -huh, uh -huh. key keys and keys okay um we have a value yeah for the up and down value field uh one means down and one means up uh hello pink welcome to the stream so i think i should actually stop trying to be a smart ass and look up input event <laughs> definition <laughs> So let's actually close all of this shit here. That's for sure. Oh shit, I still have tabs open for X11. Disgusting. Yeah, you should. Okay. <laughs> you, you were intentionally just waiting for me suffering, right? So without saying anything. I actually appreciate that. Um, okay. So I think Stack Overflow was not the right uh, thing to look. Okay. The event codes, Linux kernel documentation. Uh, all right. So let's take a look. Event types, keys used to describe event codes. Event code define the precise type of the event. Uh, scene, that's really strange. Event type, it's a key, all right. Uh, event code define the precise type of the event. Event key, events take them from key name. Uh, okay, so that means you can have like a key Huh. Event relative, it's probably mouse. Is that sorting in a ban mode? I don't know what that means. I'm a Russian. I don't understand your references. I'm sorry. I'm from a different country. Just keep that in mind. Um, Benjamin Franklin. Okay, sure. I don't know how that is. Uh, okay, so... You're from oh yeah, I forgot that. Yes, I'm from America. The land of freedom, yes. Um Okay, I think I need to just read this thing uh, properly. Uh take form key, for example, is used to represent a key on the keyboard when the key is pressed. An event with the key code is emitted with value one. When the key is released, an event is emitted with value zero. Oh shit. So, um, as you said, value means that it's unpressed, right? And uh, so let me actually try to print the value. I just want to see. I just want to see what's going to happen. So, uh, de depressed key. Ha ha ha. This is not what I wanted. Okay, so that means we're not only looking for keys. We're also looking for equals zero. So because I want to do them on release, I want to do them on release. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> but then uh, some hardware events, uh, when a key is repeated, this event have a value two. In general, key uh, name is used for keyboard uh, keys and button name is used for the... Oh, right. So do they even correspond to ASCII codes? That's what I'm interested in. Do, do they even correspond uh, uh, to ASCII code? This is the code of KG defined in Linux. Okay, cool. But I need ASCII. Don't, don't I? Or maybe I don't. If you think about it, maybe fuck it. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. So, um, so if I take a look at the code and then key J, uh, all right. It's not an ASCII order. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so I press anything, but I press G and it got the G. So I don't think I need ASCII. It's QWERTY, etc. Yeah, I, I don't think it matters. You, you know why? Uh, because I might as well... Uh, what is the type of this thing, by the way? 
what is the type of EV code? Uh, I'm gonna assume it's uh, like underscore underscore U6, right? I wonder if it's available for you for me. U16, right? So void and essential. <laughs> Uh, key, uh, v, <laughs> key. <laughs> uh, I mean, who fucking needs all of this shit? Like, seriously. Um, right. um, so, void f, void f. Um, <clears throat> Uh, now, uh, so what that means, I'm looking specifically for this shit, right? And I'm also initializing the cursor. Mm, uh, so this entire thing. Okay, uh, let's do it like this. 16, U16. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we'll see, we'll see. This one could be zero. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. This one could be zero. And essentially, I'm just doing it like so. If is void, uh, <clears throat> if is void, uh -huh, we're gonna put it like that, and then we're gonna provide this code, right? And if we've got something, void is coming. Mm, uh, fuck. Void of his coming. That's it, boys and girls. Believe it or not. Haha. <laughs> That's it. Uh, okay, so we don't have. Uh, all right. Yeah. Th this is. This has to be like a, this stuff. You know what? Since it's known at compile time. I might as well actually just um, compute its size. Uh, so it's gonna be const, also static, const size t void count, and it's essentially gonna be uh, size of void uh, divided by size of void of zero, like this, right? And uh, we can just work with that um, equal to that. And then if cursor, uh, cursor became greater or equal to void of count, we reset it to zero and return one. Mm, something like this, which probably makes sense to turn this into a size t as well. Yes, I think that's that's pretty cool. Uh, while not quit and cursor is initial zero this one has to be size t uh, has to be size t next one uh, all right i think it, it fucking works it exited abnormally but oh because it couldn't actually open the file but that should be it chat that should be it believe it or not okay let's just start it so no matter what i do right it doesn't do anything. Okay, type as much as I want. Nothing happens. Now look. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so if we, if you sequentially type void, it will detect that. So that's kind of the point of this thing. Uh, that's kind of the point of this thing, and we can hook up uh, that to some sort of an action, right? Uh, we can hook up to some sort of an action and uh, just do something on that, but we'll probably require like to have some mm -hmm. um, what's that? Oh my god, I cannot copy paste this link. Is that your and friendly? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I see. So basically, people mistype this word so often that they just... Okay, I see. <laughs> so people just mistype it that often that they had to just create that. Okay, that's fucking classic. 
Uh, fucking classic meat. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, what we can do here, uh, we can try to maybe create like a small SDL2 application um, that actually counts uh, these things. Yeah, but before we're going to do that, I think we need to commit whatever we have already. Uh, so so it's basically own Konami code. So I don't know what you mean, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so this is if test. We probably don't need that anymore, right? Because I actually got everything from that thing uh, that I wanted. And uh, so I'm going to get ignore void. And that should be it. So, and we're going to have a quick start. Console. Oh shit, okay, so there is a problem here. Like, uh, the name is hard coded, right? The path is hard coded. We need some sort of a selector, right? We need some sort of a selector. Um, file name is hard coded, right? It's something similar to EV test, right? Something similar to EV test. <clears throat> Uh, and I don't really understand what the fuck is wrong here. Directive input may be truncated right up to 250. Okay, so if the name... Can we just make the bigger name? Like, can I just give it like... Like, okay, thank you, thank you so much. I, d I don't know why we have to use like 64 in 2020. Because come on, bro, memory is cheap. Like, what, what kind of boomer code is that? Just allocate like half of a kilobyte on the stack. It's not that big of a problem, Jesus Christ. Um, okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so we have a readme, and uh, here we're gonna do make, and then you have to do sudo void. Uh, yeah, you'll have to do that under sudo. Um, sudo is required. Maybe not, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. So, maybe you can like have special permissions for that, on, uh, probably. Okay. Uh, we're gonna just put void because I'm maybe I, I'm not really qualified to suggest such things. I think. Um, all right, so we're gonna have ready set go. Right, we're gonna have ready set go, and we need to create um, a repo. Right, we need to create a repo. Who doesn't know up, down, left, left? You can probably do set. Yeah, that's actually a good idea, man. I was thinking about that as well. Uh, but it's kind of out of the scope of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to first deliver a proof of concept. Uh, maybe then later we can we can think how we can make it a little bit more safe and comfortable. In theory, if you're part of the input group, you can open the devices. Am I? Uh, though. I'm not. And this is something that needs to be documented as well, in my opinion. Um, all right. So void, and we're going to put something like void is coming. So this is going to be public. Uh, so license, by the way, we need to add the license. And I'm really sorry, chat, I'm going to use a MATI license. You may re at me, you may complain at me how much you want, but this is going to be a MIT license. There's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay. Uh, void if it's coming. Void if it's fucking coming. Okay, 2020. Um, so, and it's gonna be Lexi Tsutepov. Oh my god, email leaked. Please don't send spam to me. Okay, coming, yes. Mm, it's pretty much exists only in BSD. But who fucking uses Linux in 2020? I mean, everyone is switching to free BSD anyway. Because Linux becoming too normy uh, for epic hackers, am I right? Linux is too normy these days. Um, okay, so let's do this thing. I'm gonna add. Okay, um, release under MIT license. That's another thing. And we're gonna add origin void. 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 And uh, I'm going to push that right into the repo. And this thing is going to be available for everyone. How about that? Free code for everyone. Did it push anything? Okay, so I think it did, in fact, push something. Come on, Mr. GitHub. Okay, there we go. Oh, by the way, can I use Zalgo in the description? Let's actually check out. 
Mm, void is coming. Fuck up, going up. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, this is not. Okay, here comes. Okay. So let's give it a try. I wonder if it's gonna break it or not. Fucking perfect! Would you look at that? Oh my god. I didn't expect that. That's actually super cool. Check it out again. Alright, so. <laughs> ah, I love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. So, um, yeah. What is coming? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Monkers, yes, it is fucking coming. Um, and I think I pushed everything. Looks hacker man as fuck. Yes, exactly. Uh, so what's gonna be the next thing? Yeah. So uh, I want to have like a small counter with SDL with big um, anonymous cheer. Oh my god, thank you so much for 200 beats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. I don't know who you are, but I'm really glad you enjoy my stream. Uh, thank you so much. All right, let's, ju let's just hook up SDL into that bad boy and just print something on the screen. Like every time I do void, it will just do something like increment the counter or something like that. We will need something like uh, SDL and maybe SDL TTF Unless we're gonna use maybe bitmap font, I can steal bitmap fonts from something, uh, from something, and that will not require anything special, right? And we can just steal uh, the the parsing code and just use it. We'll see how it goes. We need pop sound. Uh, you said not JS yesterday, yeah, but I didn't promise anything, you know, because I was just uh, you know uh, discussing, so. I never promised that I'm gonna use Node.js. Haha. <laughs> Alright, so let's actually go to make files and let's introduce packages. All right, so it's gonna be X11, SDL2. Uh, this works in Node.js. Well, I mean, yeah, you can write like uh, Node.js modules in C and C++ and just like call these functions from Node.js. It's not that big of a deal, but why? Why the fuck would you do that if you can use C directly. The only reason why would you want to do that is because you don't know C, because the uh, Node.js is the only thing you learned in your university, right? But since we know C, we don't need all of this kind of shit, right? We can just use C. Right in C, right in C, right in C, oh, right in C. Lisp is dead and buried, right in C. Do, do, do. Anyway, uh, this is write simple server in Koa JS and make post request to it from C. I will think about that because at some point I will have to integrate that with OBS. But right now I'm too lazy to work with these web technologies and stuff like that. I'm just don't, not in the mood for web technologies. I'm sorry. So I'm gonna use like SDL shit. Anyways, so uh, when I'm trying to build this entire stuff, does it? God fucking am I? My vibrator is vibrating. <laughs> Anyways, so um, if I try to do something like that, is it gonna give me SDL stuff? Yes, it does give me SDL stuff, which is nice. You can just set window capture in OBS, can't you? It's complicated in i3. The window has to be always visible, otherwise none of the x applications can capture it. So essentially, like I can take this window and if I switch to another one, OBS won't be able to capture it. So it's it's kind of a well-known problem in, in OBS. And we encountered it, by the way, while developing uh, Boomer. So yeah, so let's continue. Uh, to, 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 to. I especially like how it looks like in title, so <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, in uh, DWM it works. I, I don't know, I'm too lazy to switch to any window managers. So okay, so let's do as <laughs> You didn't see anything, okay? SDL init, SDL init video, right? So, uh, okay. Uh, if it's less than zero, that means we could initialize SDL. And we also need to include some of this stuff. So it's going to be something like... What's funny is that this shit is probably going to work only on Linux, unfortunately. Um, 
Not quite sure, but uh, maybe somebody who knows how develops that stuff on FreeBSD can come in and contribute something. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, so what we need to include, we need to include SDL to SDL.h, right? So then we initialize SDL. Uh, okay, and then we can say something like f printf uh, std error error could not uh, could not initialize SDL. Then we're gonna have this thing. And uh, what else? What else we're gonna have here is SDL get error. SDL get error. Exit one. Cool. So uh, the next thing we'll have to do. Oh well, after that it makes sense to do SDL quit. Uh, metal sorting. Yes, very very original. Sorry. CPP is power programming. Welcome, by the way. Welcome. Mm, okay, so we're gonna go to SDL2 uh, and SDL uh, create. What, was it called create window? Where is it? Where's the thing? Window? I don't remember. Let's actually do grep. SDL create window. There we go. SDL create window. And what do we have here? Okay, oh, fucking damn it, mate. Here it is. Here it fucking is, mate. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and just fucking create this shit. Bruh, bruh. Uh, okay, so this is gonna be window. Create window. What's gonna be the title? Can I straight up <laughs> copy paste this thing to the title? <laughs> uh, oh shit, it couldn't. Okay, I couldn't copy paste it. Okay, I, I kind of copy pasted it, but I'm not sure how well it's gonna work. We'll see. So uh, this thing is gonna be zero um, uh, width and height. Uh, let's say it's gonna be 800. I don't think it matters because we're gonna make it resizable anyway. And what's gonna be the flex? What's gonna be the flex? Uh, so uh, resizable, that's for sure. We need a resizable thingy. Uh, resizable thingy. Cool. So after that, oh, by the way, this thing has to be constant. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh huh. Uh huh. If a window, I think this piece of shit slows down my uh, my Emacs. I think it straight up slows it down because it feels so sluggish right now. Uh, <laughs> God fucking damn it! But I hope it's gonna worth it. Yes, the error, error. Uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, but I'm gonna do it like that. All right, this is not what I wanted actually. This is not what I wanted. I want to do something like minus b. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we initialize the window. After we initialize the window, we need to create the renderer. Create a renderer. This is not where you do that, so we'll have to do something like grab rn create renderer so here it is let's just copy paste it i like to copy paste code as you can see so people say software development is difficult no it is not you just copy paste code who fucking writes code from uh, from scratch in 2020 come on bro it's so 80s nobody's doing that anymore so this one is window and I think this is index has to be minus one. So it's essentially like a driver thingy. And then you have to provide the flags. What kind of flags are we gonna use there? Uh, so we're gonna use um, hardware accelerated shit, right? So it's gonna be fast as fuck uh, like this. Okay. So, and afterwards, afterwards, if uh, it's not render, it's renderer renderer is equal to null uh, six up then five down boom there we go now we have a renderer okay so here we're gonna have an event loop and uh, this is where exactly we're gonna do oh shit the event handling so we're gonna have sdl event event while sdl poll event event we're gonna just pull them out of the queue and we're gonna check their type and uh, SDL quit, I think. I think that's what it is. And essentially this one is gonna be one. So that should create just a regular window, uh, hopefully. 
let's see if it does uh, make minus b and uh, yeah so we'll have to run it from the sudo and it does create a window but it doesn't clean it up as you can see it doesn't clean anything up so we'll have to do like a pr uh, sdl clear caller uh, all of that jazz uh, so let's actually go to something and steal some of the code from there because it's going to be easier it's going to be simply easier the title didn't work by the way did you already finish are you coding along jesus christ <laughs> all right Wait, oh, I, I didn't, I didn't look into the title. God damn it! Okay, so it, okay, it didn't work. Okay, I see. So that that means it's pointless. But maybe it's gonna work on some other window managers. So I'm gonna actually leave it there just in case. Um, so maybe it's, it's it's gonna work somewhere else. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, so 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 today we're okay uh i'm reading the messages of my boat for some reason um okay what, what, what is? yes i wanted to go to something uh i wanted to go to something uh and steal some code from there i wanted to steal some code from there um, okay so um something like clear i'm looking yeah uh render clear you, you we're supposed to set the color render clear and stuff like that um <clears throat> so main c uh all right all right all right so let's actually put it somewhere here all right so it's gonna do that so this is a renderer in all of the cases we can replace this entire stuff with just zero right we can replace it with just zero and then we do render clear and after that we have to present present that thing we have to present that thing so that should clean up <clears throat> everything now um yep and i think it worked oh shit this is okay we need this thing to be non blocking Yes, <clears throat> because this shit is blocking. We need to we need it to be unblocking. Oh shit. Okay, so I, I think I can mark it as non-blocking. Right. Um okay, Linux mark FD non-blocking. Um I don't remember how to do that. Um non-blocking call for in description. Um what's up free fool? Welcome, welcome back. Fucking modern web, my ass. Um, uh, non block. Uh, I'm so frustrated. I'm incapable of Googling anything. I'm so bad. Uh, so, Mark, this is what I want. Yes, fucking just give me that. <laughs> Um, yes, that's what I want, like, um, God fucking damn it. Um, all right, so I get the flags, uh, fcntl, then I take that, fget ftl, uh, then I set this thing back, uh, flags, uh, I also, but I remember fcntl, it, it returns int okay so might as well actually put it into a separate scope so it doesn't pollute the scope and this is how we're going to mark it as non-blocking right and now um so what does rd returns in case of failure does it return like negative value hopefully hopefully it does return a negative value uh okay okay it does return negative value and this is exactly what we want um so if rd less than zero uh, actually greater or maybe greater yeah greater than zero at all right if it's greater than zero only then we're going to try to do this all, all of this shit and uh yep uh, yeah it works and it works uh, regardless of the focus yeah there we go so and we finally made it uh asynchronous completely asynchronous which is nice 
Okay, cool. Um, so now we need to hook up the font, right? That's what we need to do. We need to hook up the font. Um, so I would like to steal something from something, right? The the font itself. So it's going to be assets. Uh, and here's the font and we can just use, the, okay, you can see what it is, but I can run it in the Chromium. Uh, yeah, so let's actually use this one because why not? Um, <clears throat> it's gonna be the, just the easiest uh, one to use. Uh, bake it and we can also bake it, why not? Uh, bake it until you fake it. Um, so, and the next one is gonna be void. void. Uh, uh, and then we'll have to load it up. Um, so I don't remember. Let me go to something and just find the font implementation, right? I'm going to find the font implementation. So here it is. And um, inside of the font, we have such functions as render. Um, so this is C++. I will have to adapt it to uh, C. Yatko. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, five hello, months of... Hello, hello. For five months of uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you. And welcome back to our Epic Comrade Club. Uh, absolutely fucking Epic Comrade Club. Um, yeah, so what I need here is just to adapt this entire code to C. But I feel like it could be kind of painful to do so because we need to support for RGBA, color, string view, and stuff like that. Maybe use something like SDLTTF. It's just such a chore to do this. I just don't want to do that, bro. Oh, Valentin is gifting one tier sub to the community. Thank you, thank you for supporting the channel. And who got the sub? Uh, Scott Dev. Scott Dev, welcome to our epic uh, bitmap font club. All right, I guess I guess I just have to do that. I guess I just have to do that. So let's actually go here somewhere uh, and introduce a structure. Uh, bitmap font, right? We're gonna have a bitmap font, uh, and inside of it is gonna, we're gonna have SDL texture. So this is gonna be just a pointer to bitmap, nothing special. Uh, right, and uh, we also need some sort of like constants for different sizes and whatnot because they are quite important here. Uh, but since it's pure C, uh, we'll have to do something like this. Not not really like this, but more more of like this. Uh, yep. So and also we need to remove the semicolons. We need to remove the semicolons, and then um, yeah, when we want to render something. Um, so to be fair, yeah, do we need to know the size? Do we need to know that? Do we need to know that? Probably not. Okay, so I'm gonna try to implement this function specifically. So bit map font render, it's gonna accept the pointer to bit bitmap font, then the renderer, then the position. Um, so this time I think we're gonna do something like int x and y. Uh, this size is going to be uh, W int H. The color is going to be SDL color, and uh, then we're going to have a sister. There we go. So this, these are going to be the parameters. Uh, I've got to head off. I've been looking for a bit, uh, but before I do, uh, okay, sure. Bye bye. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Scott Def is gifting ten tier one subs. Jesus fucking Christ, thank you so much for 10 tier. What the fuck? Thank you. And everyone who's got this up, enjoy your uh, tour to do to, to do to. Uh, th thank you so much. I don't know. So, as you can see, the hair is working. I'm, tell I'm telling you, the hair is working. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, okay, so. And now. So, here's the rendering that I need to do. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna listen to tour to do to 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 for a while. So just get used to that. Um, <clears throat> all right. So here's the code. I'm gonna fucking code. 
Uh, all right, so here's the SDL color and um, we don't need to do this conversion anymore. That's quite important. So then we can set the texture like so. So this is a bitmap and I think I can do something like this. I just need to like massage this piece of code a little bit uh, to adapt it to C. Uh, okay, so here we're gonna have something like size TN. Um, and it's going to be simply str len uh, sister, right? str len sister, and a row count. All right, so I'm going to just call it and then I'm not really sure. Wait, are we modifying that shit? I think we do. Yeah, okay. Ah, we have a support for, I see. I see. So we are rendering in line, but we're not gonna have that here. We don't need that shit. Uh, that's for sure. Um, oh, okay. Oh, by the way, thank you for reminding me. Uh, I think we need to add that to the to the project. Uh, update CMD project. Thank you so much for that. So, uh, all right. So I'm gonna copy paste it here, and uh, we're gonna put the source code. No aids in C. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, copy link. There we go. All right. Mm, okay. So we have a character rectangle, uh, which means that we need this function. So it's going to be char rect. Uh -huh. And we're going to put it here. So this is what we're going to have here. Char rect. A, re a, re a, re a rect. So this is actually bitmap font. So uh, bitmap font. Which means bitmap font char rect, and we just need to accept this entire stuff. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Bitmap font. This is like this. Uh huh. So here's the position and stuff like that. Since we already do everything in integers, we just don't need any of this stuff. It's just not needed whatsoever. Don't even worry about it. Uh, so this position X is going to be just this. So um, speaking of row, I don't think row is needed here. I think row is not needed here. So and then we have uh, so size X is going to be just W. Size Y is going to be just H. So here's the position. Here's the column, and we don't modify the row. And then, okay, that looks okay. I really like how it looks like. Uh -huh, so here's the line. This is a sister, a sister line. And I think we've done it. I think that's the whole thing. Uh, compilation, please. Okay, so bitmap font. Oh yeah, I see. So this is C, and that's why I need to do something like that. Uh, control reaches. Are you sure? Implicit declaration function char rec. Oh, okay. Uh, bit map font. And we have to do it one more time. Okay. Ah, okay, SDL caller. Um, query. Uh -huh. Oh, shit. Uh -huh. uh, I just need to do query replace SDL color color. There we go. Uh, this is not line count. This is n bitmap font bitmap. Okay, finally worked. <sighs> okay. So um, let me think. Let me think, let me think. Uh, so now we need to render something there. How are we going to render this shit? Um, so let's try to do it like that. Um, also, we can do something like SDL delay uh, of 10 milliseconds to prevent like busy waiting and whatnot uh, so oh shit we also need to construct font yeah, yeah i forgot that we need to construct font uh, we need to construct it bitmap font 
Uh -huh. So let's create the following thing. It's going to be bitmap uh, font, bitmap font from uh, from file. I suppose I think it would make the, the most amount of sense. So file path. So what we'll have to do? We'll have to turn this thing into a surface. Then we'll have to turn it into a texture and then we can assign it to the bitmap. So uh, how do we, do we construct the bitmap here? Um, so in the game, um, font, it's actually in the main bitmap font. Okay, so we have load texture from BMP file. That's what we have. Let's actually grab this function. Uh, load texture from BMP file, cool. And what does it require? Okay, it doesn't require anything special. Perfect. I really like that. So, um, so in the main, so I can do something like this. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it somewhere here. Please don't yell at me. I haven't been following this. Just what? Okay, so here's the render um, image. Uh, okay, so this is load BMP. Uh huh. So set that. So this is image surface. Create the texture. Create the surface, and then just return that. So that should work. Okay, it does work. Uh, now, uh, if I go here, this is how we're gonna do that. So a load texture and uh, we're going to use the file path, file path, um, result bitmap, result bitmap, bitmap font, and we're going to zero initialize this entire thing and we're going to just return the result. There we go. And it doesn't compile because yeah, it has to be zero, it has to be zero. Um, so we also have to accept the render, otherwise it's not going to work. Render. Um, so this is SD, I think I have to do something like that, SDL color, otherwise it's not going to work as well. There we go. Done. So now we should be able to construct bitmap fonts uh, and use them, which is quite cool. All right. So we're going to do bitmap font, bitmap font. Uh, uh, bitmap font from file. Bitmap font from file. And what file do we have there? It's a char map old school. That's what it is. Uh, char map old school. Cool. So let's actually see if it doesn't crash. Oh, cat fucking damn it. Yeah, we'll have to provide the render as well. Otherwise, it's not going to work. All right. So uh, it didn't crash, which is already pretty good. I'm already super happy. So, and now let's try to render something there. So uh, this is how we're going to do that. We have a font, uh, we have a renderer. The position is going to be zero for now. The size is going to be, let's say, uh, 10, 10. The color is going to be, um, let's put white there. So it's, it's visible and let's put hello and see if it actually does anything. Uh, it didn't do anything. Get fucking damn it. Nice. Uh, why? Uh, all right. So, um, did they do present? Where is my team? Where is my tea? Oh, for fuck's sake. Shouldn't you render after clear? Yes. Thank you, Zhiyang. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. I was about to actually. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm losing it. Oh shit. Yes. Fuck. It works. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, the next thing we're going to do, actually, um, we need to introduce a voice counter. <laughs> Um, void of count is going to be zero. So every time void of is coming, we do uh, void of count uh, plus one. Then the only thing we need to do, um, so something like char void of 
buffer is gonna be like one kilobyte because it's 2020, you can afford one kilobyte in the stack in 2020. And essentially uh, here, uh, what do we have? Uh, so SM print F void buffer, void buffer, size of void buffer. And uh, we're gonna just put this thing here. So you know what, fuck that. I think I'm gonna make this counter integer. So I can just use D and void of count, void of count, and then we're gonna use the void buffer. I said void buffer. All right, so uh, there we go. So and now what I can do here is uh, just put it like that and just program. What's interesting is that it's really difficult for me to do that on purpose. So, and it works. So regardless of the uh, application I'm in, it's gonna just increment the count. So it does that quite easily. It does that quite easily. So, and that's pretty cool. Um, word counter is ugly. So this is something that needs to be fixed as well. Uh, all right, and also load bitmap from from file uh, char map uh, should be baked into the executable. All right. Um, so yeah, this is basically the proof of concept, as you can see. And yeah, it actually you know can do that. That's super cool. Huh. Um, it works. Yes, it does. I'm gonna do a committee committee. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a committee committee. So what, what did we do in this commit? What did we do in this commit? Uh, okay. Implement. SDL based counter UI uh, and I'm gonna push that right into the repo you can find the source code of the thing I'm developing here if you're interested and yeah maybe on the next stream I'm gonna integrate this counter into my overlay so um, at the end of the stream we can see how many times I did void Right, I think it's going to be very interesting. I don't know exactly how I can integrate that. I can do that by getting rid of the wiggle guy because who fucking uses that anyway in 2020? Right, and then just integrating it down there, uh, like so. Right, so uh, in the place of it, that would be actually kind of cool, I think. And just keep programming, I think. All right. Uh, what? What? Cool. So, yep, that's going to be the the plan. It's going to be planned for tomorrow. All right. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm already tired. I wanted to do like advent of code after this entire thing, but I'm already tired because this thing was kind of intensive for me to implement and I recently don't really feel that good. So, yeah, boys and girls, I think that's it for today. That's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me now. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you for all of the subscriptions, um, beats and stuff like that. Uh, I see you all uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to schedule. We're going to do a game development, uh, right, in C++. So we're going to continue developing the game from which I stole the code, right? And uh, also check out our schedule for more information on different projects we are working on. Um, also check out our what's channel uh, not voids channel get them it's what's channel <laughs> what's channel where we archive all of the stream recordings so this stream is going to be there but tomorrow we upload them on the next day and also check out our discord server for offline discussion with the community and uh, yeah that's it everyone thanks everyone love you Mwah.